On May 3, 2023, a Ripple official caused a stir when he revealed the company's intentions to develop a unique XRP ledger designed just for digital currencies issued by central banks. Hamilton gave his perspective on the cryptocurrency industry. He is now working on improving a private version of the XRP ledger for state-backed digital currencies, known as the UR. Although the remarks made by Ripple's head of developer relations were significant, questions surfaced about whether the value of XRP on this co-ledger corresponded with public perceptions or if it was something entirely different. Black Swan investors aren't adventure shareholders. They even shared pictures of XRP startling $327.00 pricing on this mysterious network, claiming to have seen this hidden ledger. As usual, igniting a frenzy of rumors. If you're new here, don't forget to ring the bell and subscribe to receive the most recent updates on all of our XRP topics. If you like my stuff, please show me some love by giving it a thumbs up and leaving a comment with your thoughts. This information sparked a flurry of debates concerning the true cost of XRP on this private version and even the reality of the ledger itself. However, this is where the story becomes more complicated. We recently heard a podcast clip that mentioned the Republic of Palau. What does that mean? It's important to remember Ripple and the Republic of Palia's prior collaborations, particularly when they led the world's first stablecoin trial based on the XRP ledger, theoretically. These parties should be aware of the XRP price on this enigmatic ledger and the specifics of its existence. In today's show, we solve this puzzle. Get ready to watch a video that features the finance minister of the Republic of Pala. Get ready for some serious dives. Deep into the dispute about private versus public ledgers, the basis of their stablecoin, and the potential worth of XRP. Now, let's get started with the clip. We chose the public XRP ledger mostly because of its transparency. Transparency in sharing our ongoing projects and milestones has always been a priority for Paramount. The journey has been enjoyable thus far, despite some difficulties. To overcome these obstacles, its innovative efforts, try, and error with Ripple's assistance have been crucial. As the video finishes, this is seen in the Republic of Palo's financial situation. The public was clearly the ministry's first priority. Ledger for its transparency, but their claim does not establish or refute the presence of a private ledger, leaving the door open for future developments. Actually, a lot of people are interested in knowing the worth of this purported private record. An audio clip that we obtained from another podcast will now play. This will clarify that the XRP speculative pricing on this covert platform is well like there is a theory that says the public and private ledgers may converge. If this is accurate, their prices may be combined. Calculating an average, but without concrete evidence, this is still hypothetical. David Short, more popularly referred to as Ripples throughout these conversations, the CTO was there. Now let's discuss the expected cost. In the private ledger of XRP, even if it's not unchangeable, it offers an indication of the possible value that the private ledger may assign to XRP. I'll emphasize it again, as I have in the past. A secret ledger exists because of its extreme complexity. It's not merely an item. A YouTube video that was live-streamed from Japan, and from that five-minute film, there's the existence of a public ledger as well as the genuine difficulty. I've personally observed this. How are public, private, and XRP ledger notes different? The complexity of this is important to keep going, let's not fail. Keeping in mind my main point amid all of these details sincerely, I see a moment when the lines between the public and private ledgers will merge into one. Although convergence is approaching, strong, unambiguous regulations are necessary now to ensure that there won't be any confusion when they do so in the future. Simultaneously, it appears that they are still in the trial stage of this. The private ledger is currently adding a substantial this story takes a turn when we learn that the Bank of Japan, also known as SBI, recently announced its plan to enter the XRP loan space. This is a significant development as it clearly indicates that large financial players are interested in XRP. This new loan service highlights the bank's goal of using XRP for institutional transactions, and it begs the point is, if Japan didn't think cryptocurrencies would play a significant role, 
Why would they get involved in XRP lending? The viewpoint I'm advancing will eventually become extremely persuasive. Considering that the Bank of Japan made a calculated strategic decision after completing several tests and determining institutional and individual appetites for XRP now that they're lending it, it's not simply the act of lending is calculated. A financial ploy to profit from the growing popularity of cryptocurrencies, XRP is more appealing than just its speculation value. This is a viable tool for large-scale cross-border transactions involving retail customers and buses. Financial institutions are changing the way they do business. They are no longer merely holding XRP. This is not an isolated trend. They're incorporating it into functional utility initiatives and using its potential for smooth intra-institutional transfers and cross-border payments. Limited to Japan, global banking giants are coming together, for instance. The official alliance between MasterCard and Ripple MasterCard is not only a credit card company. With this agreement, it's a massive payment processing giant with a wide network of subsidiary firms. Ripple has ties to MasterCard's main division and a vast network of subsidiaries, including Fluency Consensus, Yak Dareth, and a host of others that aren't even on this list. Collaboration emphasizes liquidity and potential scalability rather than just serving as an endorsement. There's a big there is some truth to the rumors that MasterCard and Ripple work toward the single strategic goal of using Ripple as the main payment processor. Let's start at the beginning. What I am presenting to you here is suppositional speculation, along with all the news, rumors, and bits and pieces of information that are going around. Please keep in mind that my theory as to why MasterCard might have partnered with XRP is just that, a theory. Yes, they worked with Ripple, and it's a known fact that the XRP cryptocurrency and its ledger are the primary source of on-demand liquidity for RippleNet's architecture. Therefore, if they use Ripples, they're essentially utilizing XRP. Should MasterCard choose to enable payments? Though speculative, this insight highlights the significance of such a relationship and its potential ramifications. Please keep in mind that I am not a licensed financial consultant. Ripple would include the XRP ledger by default. These videos material is only meant to be watched for enjoyment. I always advise viewers that before making any financial decisions, they should do their own research and speak with experts. Many thanks if you liked the video, please tune in. Would you please give it a thumbs up and remember to click the subscribe button? Ensure that the notifications are turned on. To be the first to know about the introduction of fresh content that I'm eager to watch. I hope you enjoy the upcoming video.